John Finlay is approaching 40, but he's seeking justice for an incident which happened almost three decades ago. After being administered painkillers for a rugby injury, the 12-year-old schoolboy was sexually assaulted by a teacher in a dormitory at Aberlauer House. It's Gordonston's junior boarding school, which was run separately and in different premises from the prestigious public school at the time. He gave me what I can only presume was, I suppose, an early version of a, a date rape sort of drug. Um, and later on came to my dormitory and abused me. Once I was able to move afterwards, I, uh, I confronted him about it. I was convinced by him that actually it was due to, I, that I imagined it, that nothing really happened. And it was because the painkillers were so very strong that he gave me. And please don't tell anybody because of course he'll get into trouble. Many years on, how do you feel that incident has shaped your life, has shaped John Finlay? It's, it's had a, a dramatic effect upon my life without any shadow of a doubt. I had the headmaster's commendation on my entrance to Gordonston. I literally was the star pupil at Abelauer. However, when I got to Gordonston, I no longer wanted to be in the limelight. I wanted to keep my head below the parapet. I was very happy to be very average. My work, my relationships, everything subsequently has been tainted by that experience because I have an ingrained dread that the work, the worst is, is going to happen. So what hope do you have that the Scottish child abuse inquiry will start to address the issues of your past? I would l love to say that I have hope. However, it's yet another announcement of yet another inquiry and yet another process. I see actually no progression whatsoever with regards to any government or any school providing genuine help for victims of abuse. It's all very well to say, yeah, we're looking into it, but for crying out loud, it's about time that you could just turn around and say, instead of spending however much on inquiries, why not just spend the money on helping the victims of this abuse? Aberlauer House is now fully merged with Gordonston, which is one of a number of private schools being investigated as part of the child abuse inquiry. It says it'll respond in full and supports efforts to address historic abuse. The Scottish Government says it wants the inquiry to be able to undertake its work in a four-year timescale that can address the issues raised by survivors. And it stresses it's one of the few countries that dedicates funding for those affected. Those in charge of the inquiry have appealed for abuse survivors to contact them. But after informing the government of his case almost two years ago, John Finlay is disappointed that no one has been in touch. I, I'm pretty concerned that someone such as myself that has publicly and freely spoken about what's happened to me has not even been contacted. When they realise that I'm more than happy to tell my story, actually not to benefit myself but to, to try and benefit other people, uh, to bring the cause to light for the benefit of other individuals uh, who would rather remain anonymous, I think it's quite bizarre that they seem to be promising that yes we want to hear from everybody but they've never once turned around and said yep can we have a chat with you. I'm presuming you want to give evidence to it. I'd love to, absolutely without a shadow of a doubt. Some will argue of course that it will help schools like Gordonston, your own former school, learn from the mistakes of the past. Surely that must bring you some comfort. It does certainly bring me an element of comfort, but resolving what's happened in the past is just as important as focusing on preventing it in the future. Trusting somebody and being abused 
by that individual shatters your entire world from the sense that your framework, your psychological outlook of this is a person I can trust, rely upon, and they are there for my benefit. And it just evaporates. And that evaporation, it never leaves you. You just lose faith in everybody. And that is a horrible, horrible way to live.